When the days drew near for him, him of course being Jesus, to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. May God add God's blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the understanding of some very challenging words this morning. Thanks be to God. Amen. One of the things that my father used to always tell me, you have those things that our parents or grandparents tell us, and and at the time, they just sort of grate on your nerves, don't they? Just sort of rub you all the wrong way. Um, My dad would always say, you know, especially after we would uh, lose a, a sporting event, he would always say to me, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow. And I hated that. Hated that. Because you know what? It did. Every single next day, the sun came up and it was like, it!" he was right. The other thing he also used to tell me was that we learn more from our mistakes than we do from our successes. I know you have to make mistakes in order for him to be able to tell you that, so apparently I made a, a few, my fair share. But that's our story today. When we, when we read this scripture, it's, it, 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 I, I was drawn to that idea of we learn from our mistakes because there are several mistakes that are made in this passage by people attempting to follow Jesus. So the first one we hear is the, the Samaritans. The Samaritans reject Jesus. Now, now, when you initially read that, you've got to think to yourselves, man, that, that's sort of harsh. I mean, obviously, they should get some stuff rained down upon them. That's what the disciples, so we'll talk about those boys in a minute. But, but the Samaritans, they, they, they rejected Jesus. Because the text tells us that he had turned his face to Jerusalem. Now, for us reading it, we have the rest of the story. So we know that that at this point in Luke's gospel, that Jesus is going to start focusing on what awaits him, the cross. He's going on to Jerusalem to a place that he knows that in all actuality, he's going to die. So he is sort of getting his mind wrapped around this, turning his face towards Jerusalem. That's sort of code that, that Luke writes there. But apparently the Samaritans would have known that as well. And if you recall, and you may not recall this, but in John's gospel, Jesus has an interaction with a Samaritan woman. It's in John 4. You can go back and read that story at some point. And he interacts with this Samaritan woman, and she makes a case to him. And she says, Jesus, we have some differences. Because our people, our tradition says that we're supposed to worship here in Samaria. But you say that I've got to go to Jerusalem. And so what we're really seeing here is a difference in beliefs. The Samaritans believed that they could worship here in Samaria, whereas Jesus and the other Jews were saying, no, Jerusalem is the place in which you really should go to really be focused upon God. Now, Jesus would go on later to say that it doesn't really matter because the word became flesh and I'm here, blood, right now. But right now, in this scenario, in this scene, those um, practices were still in place. So for the Samaritans to, to reject Jesus because he believed something different than them. You see, they were assuming that their way was the right way and his way was the wrong way. Anybody relate to that? Their way is the right way, 
and all other ways are the wrong way? See, when we become so certain on this is exactly how it's got to be, that's where the trouble starts. I, I encourage people all the time, friends, especially when it comes to your faith, I think you need to hold it loosely. Hold it loosely. Because if you don't, you're going you're gonna to sort of choke the life out of it. And, and so if something you encounter is something in your faith and it doesn't quite add up, maybe, just maybe, we should leave, leave room for God to be moving. As only God can. And maybe the pursuit for us is not to have it all figured out. Because I can't find anywhere in the scripture in which Jesus says, you got to believe all the right things in order to join me in paradise. So maybe... Maybe we hold things a little loosely. Now, now listen, I, I can already feel a little bit of pushback coming from that because the, the excuse is going to be, well, then if you just hold things loosely, you won't hold anything at all and you don't have anything to stand on. Well, friends, my, my faith is not a deck of cards. So, so if you can imagine a deck of cards is sitting here and, and you pull out that foundation, what's going to fall? All, everything else is going to fall down, right? Some people view their faith that way. And if you change this about my faith, then everything else is going to go away. That's not your faith. That's not how faith is. The other challenge is, oh, well, you'll be on a slippery slope. You never know what's going to happen. I'm not a professional rock climber by any means. I feel a little bit like a spelunker after this past week in Cave Quest. But I know that if I'm holding on to Jesus... Now that's the anchor I need. That no matter what storm I may face, no matter what comes in my life, it may hurt for a little while, but I'm going to be okay in the end. So here's what I've started encouraging people to do. You may not need this. This may not be for you. So you can leave this out if you don't want to do this. But I've encouraged people to start thinking a little differently. And when you make a statement, of, especially when it comes to faith, if you make a statement about God, I would encourage you to, to add a little comma at the end of that statement and to include the words, but I might be wrong. You know, I believe this, and I've experienced this, and I've gone through this. But I might be wrong. I mean, I may not think I'm wrong, but I might be. I might be reading this complete. I might be reading this text completely wrong to you today. Friends, we call that humility. And I honestly believe that if we had a little bit hum more humility in this world, I think we might be a little bit better off. Especially people of faith. Because friends, we fall into some very, very bad traps. And we do more damage than we help. A little bit more humility. So first, humility. Secondly, our boys, James and John, they are quick to rain down some fire. Right? These Samaritans got it wrong, and so I'm going to rain down fire on Do what you did, Jesus, back in the day. Bring fire. Well, Jesus is going to demonstrate in the next chapter, in chapter 10, how we're supposed to treat those who may or may not agree with us. We'll get to that next week, so you've got to come back for that. But this is our lesson here, not to jump to conclusions. To be a little bit slow in reacting to all that is around us. Maybe the next time you go to type a mean email or to make a bad phone call, maybe, just maybe, take about 10 seconds and take some of those deep breaths that we were working on a couple months ago. And in fact, I read something this week that said your mind, body, and soul, potentially soul, because we can't really measure soul, but your mind and body, we know for a sure, will be drastically changed if you go for a 10-minute walk every day. Now, for some of us, some, some of us, 10-minute walk, we're not going to get very far. That's not the point. The point is, is that you take time. You don't overreact. 
like our friends James and John did. And, and lastly, so, so those are the first two mistakes. Lastly is that set of disciples who come to Jesus and they, and they really want to follow Jesus, but they've got, they've got something going on in their lives. And, and actually, this is pretty harsh because we think, man, we really need to be able to say goodbye and we really need to be able to bury our loved ones. That's kind of mean and cold-hearted of Jesus to say those things, wasn't it? Well, maybe. Or maybe Jesus knew exactly what he was saying. And maybe Jesus knew that what he was offering was something so revolutionary in people's lives that it would bring transformation. And those other things, while they seemed important at the time, they may not have been so important compared to what Jesus was offering. The one that, that really gets people is where he says, you know, let the dead bury the dead. But we're not very sure what's going on in that story. Again, here's, this is one of those, but I could be wrong. Um, Jesus was talking to a guy, and the guy says, I got to go home and bury my father. The problem with that fact is, is that uh, the Jewish practice was to bury the person the day they died. So the person dies, they bury. They didn't have all the great stuff that we have in order to preserve bodies, and so that body's going to start decaying very quickly, and so you, you got to get that thing in the ground. And, and so, in all likelihood, the guy's father wasn't dead yet. Or if he had, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing ahead of time. So the details of that are a little bit messy for us, and we don't really know what to do with it. But I could be wrong. But the overarching theme of all three of these individuals who come to Jesus is the fact that they were making plans. And Jesus' call didn't match their plans. There's an old saying that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Because I found in my own life that God's plans whew, are not nearly the plans that I have. Anybody relate to that? I mean, I had plans for this morning. <laughs> what you saw did not, <laughs> did not play out. <laughs> but I wouldn't trade it for the world. You see, we've got to have enough faith. Again, and this goes back to that holding things loosely. Not having to have it all figured out. But just knowing who we hang on to. Philip Sharper, editor of, of Orbis Books, de describes the Christian life as pilgrims, but even more accurately as nomads. So check this quote out. He says, A popular church metaphor is that the people of God are on pilgrimage. But a more apt metaphor should be that the people of God are nomads. Pilgrims know where their journey is headed. Nomads are called to go by uncertain paths to a place that shall be made holy at some indefinite time by something God shall say or do. There is no guide, no guide except a pillar of light by night and a wind-driven cloud by day. Sounds and symbols of the Holy Spirit. So listen, if you're searching, if you're trying to figure this whole thing out, Guess what? You're all right. Because we're on a journey together. And, and, and the destination is, is, is unclear in some ways. You may find yourself in a storm of life, in the darkness of a cave, of going through something that, that you just don't understand completely, and, and you think to yourselves, I've got to have a plan to figure this out. How about just be present? And know that God is present with you. Remember, friends, we learn from our mistakes. And we can learn from the mistakes of others. And so maybe today we learn from these individuals to be a little humble, but I could be wrong. To be a little slow to react, take a deep breath, and maybe to hold on to our plans a little loosely. Because you never know what God has in store. 
things be to God. Amen.